Now that you've got your project set up, I've got my two characters here on the same layer. You can see that over here. I'm going to set this up to color. Now what we're going to do with this is we are actually going to duplicate this layer. There's a couple ways you can do this. You can either right click on the name of the layer, and this is a good habit just because a lot of stuff is here. So I can hit duplicate right there. And by the way, if you don't have a mouse, remember you can just hit um, hold on your control button and then uh, click the you work out right click. And then I'm going to duplicate this again. So once again, right click. Oh, let me show you the other way. You can also take this and you can drag this down. You see a little piece of paper with the fold over it next to the trash can, like the new layer button? Yeah, if I drag that to that, bang, makes a new layer also. And I'm going to name this top one here. I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to call this one lines. I'm going to call the middle one color. And then my background is going to stay background. Now the lines one, we're going to do two things to this. We are going to change it from normal to multiply. What this does is it makes all the white transparent. We'll show you what that means in a second here. So go to multiply there, and I'm going to lock it. So right here, there's a little padlock. I click that and I lock it. And what happens now is I can no longer color on this layer, which I don't want to do. We're going to color on this one, and we'll see why here in a second. So click on my color layer. Now when we do this, we have a couple ways to add color to it. Now I can use my color references, and you can see I've got a Harley Quinn and a Batman one here, and I can sample from those where I can choose my own colors. So if I want to choose my own color, and here I will do this here with Harley because she's just a red, I come over here and click on the color, I take the slider, I've got more of a pinkish red, and then this is slightly more orangish red, I'm going to go with this more pinkish red, I'm going to choose a bright red color. Hit OK. So I can fill this in a couple different ways. I can take what's called a paint bucket, and by the way, that's hidden on here. If you look down at the bottom here and click on this, it becomes a paint bucket tool. If I click and hold, you can see there's a bunch of other options. But I just want this one. On my layer with color, I'm going to click. There's my paint bucket. Took my caps lock off. And this is fills. Now, this you look at it and go, wow, that's absolutely fantastic. This is just what I needed to do. However, just so you know, when I zoom in, you can see that I'm leaving a lot of white around the edges. This is because the tolerance level of the paint bucket is set, is defaulted at 32. Tolerance is basically how much difference in pixels the thing will fill. So let me back up here, Control-Alt-Z, or Command-Alt-Z if you're on a Mac. I'm going to change my tolerance to 100. Hit Enter. Now let's try this. Notice it gets much more fill. Now it filled more stuff, but that's all right. Okay. For now, that's going to be good. I'm looking at Harley over here. So let's see here, glove, that side of her hat. This sh I can't see it, but since this shoe is black, I'm going to assume the other one's red. Okay, so I'll get that in there. And zoom in and look, miss the finger. Now, sometimes this will jump out of this area. We'll talk about that here in a second. Okay, so she's filled. So we can use paint buckets on here. Okay, now, by the way, notice I said... Um, that it is coloring on this layer. How can I still see it through this one? This is what multiply does, okay? If I take this and turn it invisible, you can see that some of these lines have been covered up by the paint bucket, okay? Um, but I said all the white is invisible on this layer, which allows the lines to be in front. Now this does other things for us too. So let's say I want to color Batman. I want to use this specific blue. I've got my Batman here. I'm going to go to my paintbrush. And I'm going to, I can either use the eyedropper, I'm sorry, here, I can use the eyedropper, or if you have a brush or a paint bucket, if you just hold your Alt button down, it turns into an eyedropper, which is really useful. Sample that color. Make them invisible. Now what I'm going to do, let me zoom in here a little bit, is I'm going to go to my paintbrush, and I can paint behind all the lines on this layer. Okay, so this is very, very useful, because I can use the paint bucket on this guy, but he's got so many little shapes that this is going to take forever, and I'm going to turn this off so you can see it. If I'm going through here and I miss and hit the lines, I do this, which I don't want to do. So, Command-Alt-Z. So, on this one, let me turn this back on, this is actually much more useful to use with the paintbrush. Now, the other thing you might notice is that the paintbrush edge looks a little bumpy. I'm going to fix that. I go up here to this little, it looks like a bucket of paintbrushes. You can also access that right here, by the way. I'm going to click on this, and down here where it says spacing, I'm going to exaggerate. This is how many 
percentage of the width of the brush it stamps. If I take this down to zero, now my edge is very, very smooth. All right, so I can fill this in. Another cool trick, it's hard to do edges, right? Hold my shift button down, it will do straight lines in between where I click. So if I'm trying to track, say, the edge of his cape, I'll click here, hold my shift button down, and I can follow these edges. A lot of times that's more useful. The other thing we're going to do is I'm going to paint this very, very quickly using my right and left brackets to make my brush smaller and larger. I have to watch my edges when I do this, but the first time you put a base color in, there's no point in being careful and worrying about details. So let's say I'm coloring this up here. I'm literally going to just fill this in, shift button. Okay, obviously I'm going to make a skin tone something different than blue later on, but it's easier for me to color this first, get the whole thing finished. Let me do that for a second. Now I've noticed something here as I'm painting along. I'm using a combination of the paint bucket and the brush. And I've noticed, and I don't know if you can see with the lines on, but when I take the top lines off, that I have a very small difference between my paint bucket and my brush color. Um, I'm not gonna worry about this too much, but, whoops, see, you gotta watch it with the paint bucket sometimes, that will happen. Um, be careful, don't come back and click on this paint color again to fill it because you can see it actually builds the edge of this out. There are some ways we can get around that if we need to, but try to avoid that if you can. So I'm going to Command-Alt-Z. And for these detail edges, I'll just go back to using my brush in here. The difference between the color is so small. By the way, I turn my lines off in the top, so don't freak out. I'm not painting over my lines. Now notice I said I'm going over my detail areas here, I'm not too worried about it, but since Harley is already painted, I'm going to be careful not to go over her. So the trick to this is, is that when you're filling stuff in that has not yet been painted, don't worry about painting over it, but if something has been painted it, painted it, if something has been painted, be careful with it. So for instance, I don't care about her cuffs, which I'm going to paint later anyway, but um, since Batman's utility belt will be a different color, but I'm not worried about painting over it yet. So I've got my base colors for Batman done. I've got my base red for Harley done. I still need to get some other things in her. Um, I need to color the, the hammer and I need to get this black area. Now, when you do this, don't paint this in solid black. It will look awful. You won't be able to see anything. It'll look completely flat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a dark gray down in here. Um, I can, I'm going to use a bluish gray. I could use a, you know, Basically, if I come over to the side here, there's no color. So for those of you who are purists, I'm going to go with a dark gray, but not a black. So when I color this in, so let me zoom in here. And by the way, what I'm doing is I can do two things. I can hold my Command Plus and zoom in, or I'm holding my Alt Option button and using the scroll wheel on my mouse, which depends on how crazy sensitive your mouse scroll wheel is. You can use that. So I'm going to paint this in. So once again, I can hold my Shift button down. And by the way, use your left and right brackets to change the size of your brush so that it's fitting. Okay, use as big of a brush as you think you can get away with because it will paint faster, um, but you don't want to lose control with it and start going over the edges all over the place. Okay, so once again, shift. You're generally going to need to shift unless you play a lot of mouse keyboard video games like me. Then you'll have better mouse control. So let me fill, finish this up. And by the way, while I'm doing this, don't work from way back here. Um, if you work from way back here, it's really hard to see your detail level. For instance, if I zoom in right here, when I was coloring, I noticed that I missed a little bit piece of Batman. So not a big deal. Since I'm in my brush, I hold my Alt button down, turns into an eyedropper, click, and then I can fill this in, and then hold my Alt button down, get that, and come right back into finishing this up. Okay, so zoom in. It's no problem. You can zoom in and work your way around the figure, uh, but that'll keep that'll make your details and your edges sharp, and it'll keep you from missing things that otherwise you would not have seen. And as I'm filling this glove in, you'll notice this is why I use the gray instead of the black. If I use black, all of her details for her fingers would just be gone right now. It would just be a huge black blob. But because I'm using a dark gray, it's going to allow me to see some details. Now the shadows of the dark gray that we're going to put in later, I can use those with solid black. 
but I don't want to just go with solid black as my base color, not as my medium. Okay, what I'm basically painting in is my medium. I'm going to go darker and lighter with all of that. By the way, you can see down here I've been filling in the edges with a slightly smaller brush, but now that I've done that, I'll enlarge to as big of a brush as I can get away with to fill these areas in quickly. There's no point in using a small brush and taking forever. It's just wasting your time. Now as far as skin tones go, skin tones are probably not where you think they are. There is no skin tone portion in the color palette. Skin tones are in your oranges, okay? So you want to get like a slightly reddish orange and then you can choose from pale skin tones all the way down into very, very dark skin tones. Remember you'll have less color over here and more over here. So you can basically choose where you want to be. So if I want to have, you know, a wood tone for her hammer, I can do that in my oranges. Okay, so oranges are just lighter brown, if you will. Remember, use your shift button to do straight lines. Go to a slightly larger shape or larger brush and fill that in. And then if I want to go into skin tones, and since Harley Quinn is generally considered pale, I can go and do this and fill that in. Remember, you're filling in behind the lines. And my whole thing about doing details later we can do details later. So you can actually save yourself a lot of time just by filling this in. It's not that I'm specifically trying to fill in the mouth, um, but I don't care if I do because I'm going to have to paint it anyway, so I can just paint over it. It's digital. It's not like the paint's going to mix. And finally, I'm adding in the details uh, on Batman. Now, realistically, you know, it would probably all be variations of like this gray and black and stuff like that, but that's going to make a really boring costume, um, which is why comic books, you know, generally had brighter colors in all their figures. Remember, shift button, straight lines, all that stuff, especially if you're using um, filling in objects that have straight lines. And then we'll be done with the final details here. And there we are. So we've got all the base colors in. I gave Batman a little bit of detail um, with the yellow and skin tones. We've got the skin tones and eyes and lips and all this stuff on Harley. So we're all set to start our shading.